Thanks, Michael. Um, so I gather you've had, you've had a really good three days talking about fascinating science and, and what I've just witnessed in the, in the last couple of hours is, is indeed fascinating. So I apologise for lowering the tone by talking about economics. Um, but nevertheless, that's what we were asked to do. From, from an economics point of view, um, what's the dollars that have been produced as a consequence of the dollars that have gone into doing all of this research? So benefit cost, um, ratio, if you like, or benefit cost impacts of the CRC. Um, what we were specifically asked to do was to do it for the whole CRC um, and also to break it up within five or six individual themes within the CRC, which I'll talk about at the moment, in a moment. One of the key things to keep in mind is that this sort of evaluation is, is very challenging for a number of reasons. The first one being is that we actually started this work um, a bit more than a year ago. Um, and at that point, a lot of the projects weren't actually finished. And in any case, a lot of the impacts of the projects wouldn't have happened anyway. So we're doing what's called an ex-ante analysis. So we're looking forward from today and trying to tell a story about what are the impacts that this research is going to have into the future. Um, those of you who work in biosecurity know that it's, it's numbers about the overall economics are a little bit hard to come by. It's a space where baseline probabilities, that is the probability of an incursion or the probability of something happening, before the research is generally not agreed. And if you look at all the various analyses that have been done over the years, everyone's using a slightly different number. So that's challenging. Um, baseline costs, well, how much is Australia spending on its biosecurity system is quite difficult to put together. We're fortunate that in the course of doing this project, the, uh, the IGAD review, the Craig review took place, um, and they managed to pull a lot of data together. It's still not a complete picture, but it's a pretty good starting point. Um, so the overall biosecurity system, when, when we started this, I asked someone, could you just give me a simple chart um, to, to show how the whole biosecurity system hangs together? And then sort of silence for a while. Um, there isn't such a ch chart, right? So it's very difficult. There's lots of different pieces of things going on. Um, the other thing that's quite challenging in this process is is it's quite hard to get researcher commitment to a number, and I don't mean that in a derogatory way. What I mean is that when you go and ask researchers to say, well, look, what's the impact that this piece of research, what impact do you think it's going to have? Immediately what they want to do is go and do a double-blind controlled trial, which will take another five years, right? So that's, of course, the correct answer, but not fitting within our time frame. So what we were trying to do um, was, was get uh, the researchers to tell a bit of a story that we could construct feasible scenarios around. How do we think about the economics of biosecurity? So biosecurity is a risk thing, right? So it's probability of something happening times the consequence. And if you think about over time, it's probably the case that um, without doing anything, this probability times risk, this um, probability times consequence, this risk is increasing over time. Then we overlay on that the biosecurity system. And the biosecurity system does an enormous uh, amount of work in Australia at significantly lowering that entire curve, right? So we go from, from line one there, the baseline, to line two, something with biosecurity and the system in place. But what we wanted to work out is what happens when you add a lot of research to the underlying biosecurity system that we have. Um, so we're trying to measure the difference between lines two and three there. And we've got to take into account the fact that the biosecurity system we have already, so all of the biosecurity risk assessments that are done, where people report on probabilities, they're all actually depending on the research itself. So it's very interactive. So we have to think about ways of, of trying to pull this apart. Mostly what we've done in the analysis that we've, we've presented here in a report is think about three basic streams of impact of R&D. Uh, one is to reduce risk uh, within the system, and that could be a change in the probability of a, of a bad outcome or a change in the consequence of an outcome. So at the border, you reduce the probability of the incursion, or at the farm level, you do some research that lowers the impact should an incursion happen. And then we can further break these 
things down into you know, changes in probability of incursion, changes in the probability of detection, and so on, all the way down the chain. So, uh, similarly, when we reduce the, uh, the consequence uh, of, a, of a biosecurity event, we can reduce the cost of establishment, or we can reduce the cost of eradication, or other costs within the system. The other thing that research can do is reduce the cost of achieving a given level of risk. Right? So the system's motoring away, but if you do your research, you can achieve a better reduction in risk, but without spending any more money. And that can happen at all the different levels uh, at which the biosecurity system takes place, surveillance, diagnostics, um, operations and response, and so on. And then the third thing, and this is relatively uh, unusual for, for agricultural type CRCs, is that um, it's possible that the research can generate income from the sales of a particular technology or from re returns from IP. And in the case of this CRC, uh, it's potential returns from the synthetic amorphous silica product, the Davron product. So that's how we sort of break down the story. Um, the way in which we do the actual calculations, oops, is um, for those of you that know a bit of probability statistics, I don't expect you to read this. We use the basic statistical tool of the Markov chain. Um, they're, they're closely related to various Bayesian decision systems and so on, which I know uh, have been developed as part of the CRC. What we try and do is establish uh, a set of baseline probabilities in the chain, and the chain could be for a particular product or it could be for a particular region or whatever, depending on what we're looking at, uh, and then we change those probabilities. Okay, now we, we, we needed to do an analysis of the entire CRC, but there's too many projects to do every individual project, right? Um, we didn't want to just look, go, go top down and try and make some sort of inferences from very high up, but we also couldn't go from the very bottom up because there's too many projects to individually evaluate and would take too long. So what we've done is taken a sample of projects in each theme, um, and that's by cost, roughly we've covered 40%, uh, give or take on the various themes. Uh, and for those sample projects, um, we've constructed what we're calling a reasonable scenario of the impacts over time out to the, out to the future. And we've done lots of sensitivity analysis around that, around that scenario. Um, and generally, I mean, we've had a lot of discussions with various people involved in those particular projects. And, um, and hopefully there's some that we came to agreement about how we were going to do the underlying analysis. It's important that our interest here was in building up a picture of the whole CRC by theme, not necessarily providing a detailed evaluation of each individual project that we looked at as case studies. Um, even though we've done that as, as, as a basis of, of what we've done, what we were interested in in those case studies is pulling out particular features uh, in a way that we could use it to, to aggregate things up. And so essentially what we've done is we've taken each case study um, as, as a point, as a statistical point, if you like, and then we've used some statistical techniques um, um, to infer upwards what that means for the whole CRC. So just to show you um, some of the individual results by theme. So these numbers are benefit cost ratios. So what that means is it's the ratio of in today's dollars, the future stream of benefits, and we run these out for 30 years. So if you add up that future stream of benefits over time, but you discount things in the future um, using, using the interest rate or the discount rate, um, it's the ratio of that dollar amount of benefits to the dollar amount of costs of the project, again, in present value terms. So where those costs have happened historically, we accumulate them up to today, under the idea that you could otherwise have put that money in the bank and earn the interest rate. So that's what the benefit cost ratio is. Uh, it's a nice, convenient way of reporting results. So you can see along the bottom there um, the different um, themes that we looked at, uh, border biosecurity, surveillance, diagnostics, incursion response, and then fruit fly and grains as two specific, um, uh, specific areas. 
the, the pale dots are the range of benefit cost results from the different case studies, and the red dot is, the, is just the straight average um, of those cost benefit results. So they, so they vary from, from sometimes relatively low numbers to some very big numbers like 20 to 1. Um, just to give you sort of um, perspective on this, if you get a benefit cost ratio of 1 to 1, that means that your project has earned whatever the discount rate is. In this case, it was 5%. So your project has earned a 5% rate of return. And the one-to-one -one is sort of break even. You've got, you've got your money back. If you're getting uh, better than one-to-one, -one, in particular if you're getting 20 to one, 20 to one's an outstandingly good result. Uh, if you've got that in your superannuation fund, as you can you know, retire tomorrow. Um, uh, and all the numbers in between are in general, very good numbers uh, coming out of this, this CRC. If we look at the just the, oops, the frequency distribution of the BCR numbers, you can see that the most frequent outcome is about two to one, uh, but then there's very um, similar frequency for numbers between about four and just under ten. Uh, then it drops off a bit, and then there's there is some quite high numbers of about fifteen or thereabouts some of these results. So quite diverse, um, but uh, um, generally positive numbers. Now what we wanted to do was to be able to say something about how do the returns from different themes compare, uh, different research themes. Is there a clear difference uh, between the different themes? What this chart, this is a little bit of an ugly chart, but what this shows you is uh, if you look at the, the line, that's the 95% confidence interval of a particular benefit cost ratio, and the number in the middle is the mean of the of the ratio. So, and these are these are in deep decreasing order. So, the highest average is grains, followed by surveillance, followed by incursion, fruit fly, diagnostics, and then border by security. But the interesting thing to note is that all of these confidence intervals overlap. So in statistical terms, if, you're 90, if, if two 95% confidence intervals overlap, uh, and in some cases are fully contained within each other, then you can't say that there's a statistical difference between any of these results. Right? So each has slightly different ranges, each has a slightly different mean, but actually there's really not that much to tell um, between the different theme areas. Um, the Grains one uh, result in particular is at the top end there, is dragged up quite a quite a bit by the Davron um, amorphosilica product, which, which potentially generates a very high uh, rate of return, simply because there are so many ways, so many markets that this product can potentially be sold into. Okay, so if we put all these numbers together and try and get uh, an aggregate benefit cost ratio for the entire CRC, uh, this is what we get. We get an average of five to one, and if you look carefully, you'll see you might need to just put the balloons up, five to one, uh, just to reinforce uh, that result. Um, and there's a there's a 95 the 95 percent confidence interval is between four uh, and, and seven roughly. Now, what, what does this number mean? I, I, I should have done a chart on on the rate of return associated with this, but I can tell you that associated with the five to one benefit cost ratio is a rate of return. So this is you know, similar to the, to the interest rate you're getting in your bank account of just under 20%. And the range is from 16% to about 24%. Now that's quite a high rate of return. If you think about it at the moment, uh, the government, I mean, when you think about your real interest rate that you're getting in your standard bank account, it's approximately zero at the moment. It's not that much higher than zero. Uh, depending on who your super fund is, uh, you know, you're probably not getting um, 90% over a 30 year period. Um, if you're in one of those really high fee ones that we've been hearing about recently, you're getting quite a bit lower than that. So this is quite a good, quite a positive result for the CRC. Now, I think our methodology and the way we've gone about uh, estimating benefits is quite conservative. Uh, we've tried to be very conservative at every point where we've had to make a decision. Um, we've heard on the, on the lower side rather than the upper side. Um, and so lots of projects could make an individual case for a much higher return, but we're interested in producing something, something credible really at, at, at a high level. 
that would be useful in communicating to, to various stakeholders. What does this sort of number mean? Another way of trying to think about what it means is that the CRC, the total, total CRC, all of the resources that went into it in present value terms over its life is about $170 million. So if you have a benefit cost ratio of five to one, that means benefits in total of $870 million over 30 years, or equivalently, that's, that's equivalent to 57, a stream of $57 million a year, every year for 30 years. Um, and of that, um, about 220 million comes from, the, comes from the sale of IP from Davron. So we've got about $650 million uh, in total accruing to other aspects of the CRC. If we think about the whole biosecurity system in Australia, how would we get, what needs to happen to get to $650 million in benefits uh, in present value terms? There's a number of ways of thinking about that. But one is to think of it as a combination of a 5% reduction in ongoing costs of managing biosecurity, um, a 1.5 percentage point reduction in, in the probability of incursion of something, um, this is across the whole system, combined with a 2.5 uh, a percentage point increase in the probability of early detection. And so that's one possible way of thinking about this. Or you can break it up slightly differently I think of it as a reduction in ongoing costs and only a 1% reduction in the probability of incursion um, or a 2 combined with a 2 percentage point increase in early detection uh, and a 2.5% reduction in the cost of eradication uh, and establishment, for example. So these are a reasonably small changes. Uh, so, that, so to our mind, what this means is, first of all, that these benefits are, uh, are feasible. So these sorts of benefits we're talking about, we're not in the realm of, of having to claim enormous reductions or changes in the system. Um, we get these good returns in a, in a, in a very feasible way. So a little bit more context, um, if we think about what does $57 million a year, every year for 30 years, what does that mean? That's basically equivalent to an 11% annual funding increase devoted to plant biosecurity. So given how hard it is to, um, to get funding for these things a lot of the time, an 11% increase uh, equivalent as a consequence of the research that's been done um, is, uh, is pretty good. And, and the returns from the Davron product alone uh, are equivalent to a 3% increase in, in funding. Another way of thinking about that is that the magnitude of the equivalent annual returns from the CRC uh, is approximately enough uh, to offset all the recent increases in cost recovery that have taken place uh, within, uh, within Commonwealth and state governments, while providing the same, the same um, biosecurity to all the users. Um, so there's just different ways of trying to think about what these numbers mean, um, but overall, this benefit cost uh, result uh, of about five to one, um, I think so a good thing. It's conservative, but it's, it's, it's ind indicative of a very good outcome for the CRC. Thank you.